Shalom, all praises to you. I will bar Shem, Yahweh Shai, bar Shem, I will Kadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great mills on the rule well. And Shalom to the whole full elect. This is Payal of the GMS London camp. And this video is entitled, Who Did Sin? Okay, um, basically, I want to delve into reincarnation, but more to the point of the reason why I want to delve into reincarnation is to harp on why when people are reincarnated, they may come with some form of um, disability, disease, or they even may play out a judgment at some point in their life. And um, only that's because the Heavenly Father sanctioned it to be their judgment, all right? How, however your life plays out, that's the judgment from the Heavenly Father, all right? And I remember Glenn, Glenn Hoddle, I remember when he was the England coach, uh, the, the England football team, or soccer, as you may know, across the pond. And he, he got the sack from the team because he, he basically said that he believed that anyone that was lacking a wheelchair, it was because they did something in their past life and they were being judged. And now when I really look look back at it, yo, that that that's I remember watching it, I could have been about seven, eight years old, around that age. I know it was mid nineties or something like that. Or late nineties, maybe ten years old or so. But basically, um I remember thinking like, yeah, that's what I think as well. So I couldn't see why there was such an uproar. All right. But obviously it went against the New World Order agenda, all right, and they were basically, you know, that was part of setting um, the president for um, politi politically correct culture, all right. So I'm going to kick it off with this first scripture. This is Hebrews 9 and 27, all right. So it says, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. All right, so we know that as as you there's a saying that this generation is personified to the forefront of it all being YOLO. All right, the acronym YOLO, which means you only live once, signifying that you should basically live your life to the fullest and do anything you desire, which really is prophecy because that's in the book of wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha. Right, the first chapter, when you read to the fifth chapter, it really delves into that whole mindset and um, the outcome of it. But um, that's that's this generation's culture, all right? And they're aware that you only die once. That's that's everything everyone's aware of. So it says, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after it's the judgment. So if you get judged after you die, where is that judgment? Uh, how is that judgment going to play out? Because you know people believe, oh, you go to heaven and hell, or hell. There's no such thing. The Bible doesn't speak of heaven and hell. All right, in the in the, um, the Greek mythological sense of things, in terms of a, a pit where you burn for, for eternity, or well, it doesn't talk of, but there is a spiritual realm above, but that's actually where everyone goes. Right, but, to move away from that and stay on a point, I'm gonna delve into reincarnation and show you what happens. So this is the book of Ecclesiastes, the first chapter. I'm gonna read from verse nine down to eleven. It says, "As the thing that have been is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done." All right. And there is no new thing under the sun, so there isn't anything new under the sun everything you see has been there from the beginning someone might say oh well there's, there's bullets and there's that's bullets is the same thing it's it's been around for generations millennia but it's just as you could a, a variation so to speak right and then um but the concept isn't new all right and it's the same thing with um, for example, the television, right? The television 
is basically all the even these these um phones and iPads and whatnot, laptops, they're basically a play on the Urim and the Firm the Firm, which basically is um the crystal ball that the high priest had in inside his vesture. Right? But anyway, reading on it says verse ten. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see this is new? It have been already of old time which was before us, alright? So there's nothing you can look at and say, Well, this is new, right? Because see if you have understanding, then you understand the scripture is on point. But if you if you're not, you know, fully acquainted with the, the prophecies and the secrets of the Bible, right, the oracles of the Bible, then guess what? You you, you may think that it, this is you know, this is a lie. All right, so verse 11, this is the point, it says, There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. All right, so I'll read it again, it says, There is no remembrance of former things. So now, this lets you know that the no new thing under the sun is the people, all right, because who has a memory? Right, it says there's no remembrance of former things. Who wouldn't remember the former things? The people that are being reincarnated upon the earth. Neither shall there be any remembrance of the things that are to come with those that shall come after. And that's because, as I read in the book of Hebrews 9 and 27, it says, A man shall live, it's appointed for a man to live one life and then after that, the judgment. Because when you die, you go before the, the judgment seat of the Heavenly Father gives you his judgment then you, you wait there for a moment all right and i'm going to delve into that how long that moment is a little later all right but then you come back reincarnated which the word reincarnate means re meaning back in meaning in and carnate meaning carnal or flesh all right so you're back in the flesh back in the body all right so you're reincarnated and um you don't remember the judgment you just go through living your life and then the judgment will be fulfilled, however so, all right? So it says, Neither shall there be any remembrance of former things that are to come with those that shall come after, all right? So, a quick point to reiterate that is, it is talking about man. This is Ecclesiastes 6 and 10. That which has, did, that which have been is named already, and it is known that is man, all right? So, see, plainly, Solomon plainly breaks it down. Does it mention that which was that has been in the verse I previously read? So, there's neither may he contend. Sorry, that's the point. That which have been is named already, and it is known that it is man, all right? So, I want to deal with this is the last scripture I want to delve into on the understanding of. of reincarnation in its simplest form it says second edges 14 and 13 now therefore set thine house in order sorry 14 and 35 it says for after death shall the judgment come all right so after death judgment comes when we shall live again all right so you're going to be reincarnated and live again and then shall the names of the righteous be manifest and the works of the ungodly be shall be declared how are they going to how is the righteous going to be manifest and the ungodly be declared by the judgment that they're given upon the earth all right ultimately and that comes only in full circle with your life because you may you may start off on a bad foot as in being disabled but as in the, the account that I'm going to give, it was to the benefit for the man, all right? But then you may also have, like, you know, be of no blemish, like, um, like, like, like King David's son. Um, his name's escaping me right now. Uh, Ab Absalom, all right? No blemish. Be the, hands the most handsome man to walk on the earth. But you get judged by the Heavenly Father and get taken out, all right? So that's why it says, and then shall the names of the righteous be manifest and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. So ultimately in the judgment of that man's life, when everything's said and done, 
then will be known the judgment of the Lord. Right, so I'm going to delve into this example. To show the judgment of the Lord. All right. Who, and and that's why I got the title. This is where I actually got the title for the video. All right. Who did sin? So it's John 9 and 1. Uh, I'm going to read down to verse 7. But the points in the third verse. So it says, John 9 and 1. It says, And Yahushua passed by. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. Right, so this man was born blind when Yahushua saw him. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he is born blind? All right, so they, they, they said to the, the, the Lord, like, yo, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, why did they say, who did sin, this man or his parents? Because they want to understand if his forefathers, right, sin before him that he was born blind all right um so it says verse three yahusha answered neither have this man sinned nor his parents but that the works of yahweh uh should be made manifest in him so he weren't he didn't commit any form of sin this was done solely for the lord to be able to heal him that was the ju that was the judgment that every father put before him, all right? But it shows you that they understood that you would be born born maimed in a form of sense of way because that's, that's in the law, all right, which I'm going to grab in a moment. But it says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work, all right? As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world, all right? When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the man, eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Silo, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way thereof and washed and came seeing. All right. So the point being is that the reason why he was born this way, blind, was so that the works of the Heavenly Father should be worked upon him but the fact that they understood that it was a judgment all right is the main point okay they understood that you could be born a certain way and it be a judgment from the heavenly father all right so i'm going to show you how that works so now this is the book of exodus 20 and 5 so it says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I am the Lord, Yahweh, thy power. I am a, am a jealous power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Right? So why did it say fathers? Because your lineage is basically... Um, is determined by your father by your father's line all right uh, the lord deals with patriarchy all right that's why our forefathers abraham isaac and jacob are so all right or patriarchs should i say so it says um uh iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me why did he say unto the third and fourth generation because those that's the time it's allotted for a man to come back in their lot, all right, and you have the book of um, Ezekiel, all right, it tells you that in Ezekiel 18 and 20, it tells you that um, the righteousness of the son, um, actually, let me just read it. So it says, um, Ezekiel 8 and 20, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. And that's why a child could be born immediately after and not be maimed in any form or way, all right? Or the son could be born after healthy parents and be maimed in some form or way, right? Because that's a judgment from, that's, 
them bearing their own sick their own sin. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Alright? So it's plain as day. And that's why Isaiah 14 and 21 is there, all right? Because it basically deals with um, Esau, prepare slaughter for, uh, for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, because they are their fathers in reincarnation. And likewise with the righteous, everyone falls in a lot. He tells you that in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Why? Because as Daniel was told, stand down in our lot until the last days. It's because whatever you're allotted to do, you're going to come back and play that role. All right. So Lord willing, you've been edified. Would thou say shalom?